Hello and welcome to Amiga Tech, the series in which I show effects I've programmed for the Commodore Amiga. Today we'll be taking a look at combining the CPU and the blitter on the A1200 to gain more performance when blitting bobs. Let's look at this in action and then I'll explain how it works. Under normal circumstances, my program manages to draw 17 bobs using the blitter on the A1200. However, when combining the CPU and blitter together, the same program manages to draw 19 bobs on the A1200. Now, the reason that we can use the blitter and CPU combined to blit faster has everything to do with the way chip memory on the A1200 works. Unlike chip memory on OCS and most ECS machines, the Amiga 1200 has the AGA chipset. This allows it to access chip memory in chunks of 32 bits at once instead of just 16 bits. Normally this doesn't help you much as the CPU is very slow at accessing chip memory. But if the blitter is also running we can make use of the A1200's instruction cache to do things outside of memory while the blitter is working in memory. And then we only need to write the results to memory when we're done. If you do this without combining the blitter and the CPU, you will get no performance increase. But if you do this while the blitter is running, you will get a performance increase. To show how this works, I've prepared a few diagrams that uh, showcase the various DMA cycle sequences and how this all works together. Let's take a look. Before we get started, all DMA sequences I'll be showing you are best case ones. That is, they assume no other DMA is running on the bus. With that said, let's take a look. First, let's look at the DMA cycle sequences for the blitter running on its own, specifically in the most efficient channel modes available for cookie cut and copy. Each cycle the blitter operates, it accesses 2 bytes or 16 bits of memory. This means that over a period of 20 cycles, it will uh, access 40 bytes in total. However, the blitter doesn't always run its most efficient. There are channel combinations in which it has idle cycles. Normally, when you're blitting bobs, you don't want channel combinations with idle cycles. But, for this particular effect, it's actually rather useful to have a combination that does have idle cycles. And luckily for us, one such combination exists for at least a copy blit. This is the blitter B and D channel copy, which introduces one idle cycle every two blitter cycles. As you can see in the example diagram, this means that over 20 cycles, the blitter will access only 28 bytes rather than the 40 it normally does. So what about the CPU? Well, the 6820 in the A1200 does have a 32-bit path to chip memory. However, it can't access chip memory every cycle. It can only do so every other cycle which means that, as you can see in the diagram, that its best case performance will be equal to the blitter. In 20 cycles, it will be able to access 40 bytes of memory. So what happens when the blitter is running and you access memory with the CPU? Well, what happens is that the blitter gives the CPU one cycle for every three cycles it has gotten, meaning that the CPU effectively gets one in four cycles. But that cycle is 32-bit. And as you can see in the diagram, the effect of this is that after 20 cycles, the CPU and blitter combined will have accessed 50 bytes of memory rather than the 40 normally accessed by the blitter in the same time. All this is valid for the cookie cut blit and the standard copy. However, there is another mode that we discussed before, and that is the B plus D copy. The B plus D copy introduces extra idle cycles, which can be used by the CPU. As can be seen in the cycle diagram, this changes the results a bit. In 20 cycles, we can now manage to access 52 bytes with the blitter and CPU combined, rather than the 50 bytes we managed earlier. It's worth pointing out that these DMA cycle sequences are theoretical. In the real world, the CPU will occasionally miss one of these DMA slots, causing a slight degradation in performance over what this theoretical best case shows you. Having looked at the DMA cycle diagrams, the question becomes, how do we actually combine the use of the CPU and the blitter for blitting bobs? The method I ended up with is actually surprisingly simple. If we want to blit an image, what we do is we have the blitter blit the topmost part of the bob and the CPU blit the bottom part. This can be done fairly easily in a single routine. 
which is a huge advantage because that means we can simply call that routine instead of whatever routine we normally call when blitting a bob, which makes using this effect real simple. The trick is figuring out the correct split. How many lines shoot the blitter blit? How many lines shoot the CPU blit? For this, my example uses the CIA timers and a small performance measuring loop. All this loop does is blit a bob with each different split in lines between the blitter and the CPU while keeping track of which is the fastest. Of course, it's all nice to have a theory that tells us that we should be getting a higher level of performance when using the blitter and the CPU combined. But what about real life? Just how big is the performance that we gain? I mean, looking at the example, you see that the effect is quite modest. But it is a bit more than you might expect. So let's have a look at performance. Our expected performance, as shown by the DMA cycle sequences earlier, is that the blitter by itself will do 40 bytes in 20 cycles, whereas the combined blitter and CPU effect should do somewhere between 50 and 52 bytes per 20 cycles. I use the CIA timers in the Amiga to measure the result of the program in action, and what I got was, well, a little bit lower. As the graph shows, the theoretical result was around 125, maybe 126%. The measured result was considerably lower, clocking in at around 113%, which might seem low, but in reality is a pretty nice boost, all things considered. One of the things I had to implement to get this to work was a working cookie cut algorithm on the CPU. Now, normally this is done by the blitter and it is, well, one of the most important steps in drawing a bob onto the screen. Because it's such a core aspect of the effect, I'm going to show you how the cookie cut algorithm works and, well, in essence, show you what the blitter and the CPU do when they draw a bob on screen. The cookie cut algorithm requires three things. A source image, a mask of the source image, and a background image. First, the CPU shifts the mask. Then, the CPU shifts the image. Next, it cuts out the shifted mask from the destination image. And last, it combines the shifted bob image with the destination image. Of course, you actually need to do a little bit more than what the animation showed, so let's go over the implementation details. The first thing that needs to be done is convert the X and Y coordinates given to an address in memory. There's two steps to this. First, let's look at the Y position. What you do is you take the Y coordinate and multiply it by the width of the bitmap you're blitting to in bytes. Next, let's deal with the X location. The X location is simply take the X coordinate and divide it by 8. Round that down to the nearest multiple of 4 and you've got the correct address to blit to. The next step is to calculate the shift value. The shift value tells you how many pixels you're off from the nearest 32 pixel boundary. In essence, it's needed to make sure that your bob won't be blit on a multiple of 32 pixels, but rather on a multiple of 1 pixel. Now, if you shift data, you need some space to shift into. So, we take the width of the bob and add a single long word to it to make sure that we have that room. The next step is to make sure that when we blit, we can actually blit a rectangle rather than a continuous line. To do so, we take the width of the bitmap in bytes and subtract the width of the bob in bytes. Further, we subtract an additional long word. The value we now get is called the modulo. This value is added to the value of the address we're currently blitting to after finishing each line of blitting. And now for the cookie cut algorithm itself. Cutting out the hole in the background is called masking and it's done by taking the mask we've got, inverting it using the not function, then we read a long word of the destination data. Now we and the inverted mask and this destination long word together. All that remains now is to combine the destination and the new bob image. This is done using the OR function. Simply write out the result of the OR to the destination location you just read in. Repeat this process for the entire bob and you've just drawn the bob using the cookie cut algorithm. Should you want to try out something like this for yourself or if you're just interested in more details, please visit my website. I've written an article that goes in quite a bit of detail uh, about this effect. Um, in that article you can find stuff like a more complete set of performance characteristics, um, the caveats you might run into, 
uh, some notes, uh, general notes about the effect and more uh, detailed explanations of how the algorithms work. Uh, you'll also find the complete source code and the example program for download. So if you're interested, check it out. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have something to say, please leave a comment. I hope you genuinely enjoyed it. And with that, I say, see you next time. Bye bye.